From known domestic abusers using Homelander as an idol to people saying that pissing yourself and using the n-word is peak content, I don't know what more the boys fandom can do to amaze me. But dear God, I have to talk about it because being in the boys fandom has been a mess. So if you're interested on a video talking about all of the problematic aspects that surround the boys fandom, keep on watching. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to Ella Pastoral. This video was specifically made thanks to the help of these lovely patreons right here and i feel like with the recent drop of the newest season of the boys that this is the perfect time for me to talk about all of my issues surrounding the boys tv show the boys comics and specifically the boys fandom because i feel like the show has festered such a problematic fandom and i can't stand it it's actually hell to be in the boys fandom but before i can really go in on the boys tv show and the fandom surrounding it we need to be on the same page on what the boys is so the boys Boys is an American TV show that's on Amazon Prime that surrounds a darkly comedic drama based off the comic of the same name. The Boys is an American TV show that talks about the dark side of superheroes and it is an adaptation of the comic of the same name. You can find it on streaming platforms such as Amazon Prime. I don't know if it's anywhere else but I watch it on Amazon Prime and this show is a mess. Practically what the show is about is what if superheroes were actually horrible people behind the scenes scenes like the celebrities the politicians of our actual world so we have the seven which is supposed to be this world's version of the justice league but instead of everybody having like their own actual like you know cult of personality the main guy that people worship and they literally lick the toes of is homelander homelander is supposed to be our superman character right and he is the worst of the worst the other members of the seven have their own diabolical evil traits but homelander oh my gosh she's a domestic terrorist and the group of people that we're supposed to be rooting for is called the boys but the boys they're just regular schmegular vigilantes with no powers while the seven literally have a a fake Superman knockoff. So we have to look at them like damn good luck. And personally for me, I really like the show. I feel like the show came out at a good time. It came out after Infinity War and Endgame. And I really feel like everybody was getting really sick and tired of the saturation of superhero TV shows, superhero movies that Marvel kept coming out with. It was getting frustrating. And so when the boys came out with its dark gritty take on superheroes, everybody was fawning over it. I really like the boys so much that I watched the two spinoffs that Amazon released for the boys anthology series that practically talks about the life for everybody else who aren't the main seven and the vigilante group known as the boys as well as the spin-off spin-off called Gen V. Gen V is my show and I really 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 love the characters. I personally think that Homelander is a great villain. I have no idea what the name of the actor who plays Homelander is but he is such a great villain. Every time he gets onto the screen my heart sinks. I was getting so sick and tired of all of the villains in mainstream media having a redeemable backstory or something like that we, we need people to hate and the boys made sure to give those people to hate for sure okay so now that we officially know what the boys tv show is i want to officially tap into my issues with the show so even though i practically sang the praises of the boys and how much i like the tv show to the point i watched the spinoff i feel like the tv show has a lot of problems and i'm going to talk about my main issue with the tv show and that is the idolization of homelander like i get it homelander is the big bad main villain and in the universe of the boys he's even the hero the hero of all heroes even and i feel like my main issue with that is the fact that this man has no weaknesses when you're watching a tv show of any type you want the main big bad to have some type of i don't want to say flaw but you need them to have some type of weakness some type of achilles heel that the heroes can attack and when it comes to homelander that that boy has none and I just feel like after season after season after season of watching the vigilantes try to dig at him and him get like no type of I don't know like decrease in health points is getting frustrating. Obviously, I'm gonna be talking about the show, so spoilers, right? But for example, last season, spoilers for the whole entire boys TV show at this point, right? We found out that Homelander had a dad, that the Russians or maybe the people from the US, I can never tell, right? When it comes to evil governments, they had Homelander's dad in a basement somewhere. And so the boys were hoping to use Homelander's dad, right? As a way to finally kill Homelander. But literally, instead of actually following 
following through with the plan and using Homelander's father to kill him. I forgot which member specifically, but some of the members of the vigilante group known as the boys decided to help Homelander fight back against his dad because I guess his dad is the bigger threat. But after a while, it's kind of just like, damn, they never gonna let Homelander get any licks in because who do they have now? And to make the situation worse, now Homelander is having more allies, right? Because through a whole bunch of plot shenanigans that I guess eventually I'll get into in this video, he now has a son with his same powers that he is grooming to be the next him. So literally, I'm looking at the members of the vigilante group like, what have y'all done? Y'all haven't done nothing. I mean, I'm not gonna hold them. I'm not gonna hold them. They have gotten some of the other soups. Like they killed Stormfront, this Nazi soup that was with Homelander for like three seconds. They killed the invincible guy, like Chameleon or whatever his name is, I forgot. The main big bad is definitely Homelander. And I feel like the creators of the show knew for a fact that it was getting boring and tiresome because in the spinoff, we finally get to see a character, Marie Monroe, I believe her name is. She's the main girl right she literally gets her licks in with homelander and even he surprised like i know this girl ain't do some damage to me and people mainly the racist fans were upset that there was a character in the boys universe specifically a black female character that could possibly do damage to homelander like she isn't one of the most super powered people in the show right now like come on y'all come on y'all but it isn't just the fact that homelander is overpowered to the point that it's annoying it's also the little stuff that is just gross right so if you guys don't know the boys comics is literally a cesspit of disgusting cringe lord edgy content i don't even know if i can post the pictures that i found while doing my research for this video on here but just know that it's a mess um there's a character in the vigilante group he's the black guy i think he's the only black guy in the vigilante group his name is called mother's milk and so you might be like damn emma why is this dude called mother's milk is literally because in the comic his mother feeds him with his milk and i don't even know if i can put the picture here but his mother i don't know if she has stretchy tentacle powers or something but she literally uses her boobs as pistols in order to put milk into her son's mouth at his grown age and editor emma good luck censoring this so youtube doesn't strike down this video but it's a mess and i feel like the tv show did a good job at toning down the disgusting bizarreness that is the comics and i'm telling y'all this this is my warning to y'all do not go on your own and try to find out this nonsense it gets wild it gets freaky it gets it gets perverse right it gets really perverse i even get scared right but the show it keeps in some of the weird stuff so for example like i said in the third season um they have to get homelander's dad to try to kill homelander right and there is a scene where homelander's dad goes to a party i don't even know if i can use these words so try to follow me y'all he goes to a party where people engage in 18 plus activities and obviously it's an 18 plus party if y'all catching my drift and i don't know if this was supposed to be a homage to the disgusting depravity of the comics but literally somebody with a male member decides to explode all over mother's milk and i was just watching the scene like oh my god like guys it went on for so it was like it was crazy like obviously i'm not gonna put in no pictures <laughs> i'm already in trouble with youtube because of the k-pop stand but oh my god it was insanely graphic and i was just like oh this is the reality of the show like it gets disgusting and crude past the point of being funny like it, it just kept going on and on and i was like free the guy free the guy but the the whole mother's milk situation isn't my only critique on how the boys tv shows handles its actors slash actresses of color so for example right there is an actress her name is karen fukuhara and she plays kamiko she is the asian girl that we see in the actual vigilante group known as the boys and she is the only member of the group that has superpowers well who has like organic superpowers i guess and the issue that i have with her character and her characterization is that she kind of falls into the silent Asian submissive trope that is so prevalent in Western media. So there is this gigantic fetishization issue when it comes to East Asian women where they are either seen as a submissive quiet wife or the silent but deadly femme fatale. You kind of see this in the Kill Bill franchise but it literally is so wild and weird because like
like she is just not allowed to talk at all and i'm pretty sure the actress has come out like practically saying that she wishes her character could talk and she has talked to the show runners about the lack of her being able to talk even though it's been four seasons and i just feel like there are some characters in the boys tv show that are so stagnant i just don't understand what the purpose is in having them there i'm so lost but i don't just have issues with kamiko i also have issues with black noir he's one of my favorite superheroes in the whole the seven i guess but the way they treat that man is ridiculous like homelander he treats everyone so badly but dude justice for black noir like they killed him off i think in the new season they brought him back to life but i don't even know if we are going to be able to see him um they hide his face because i think he got some burn scars but i think originally before like the modern day iteration of the seven they made him hide his face because he was black and i get that i get that i'm not mad at that i'm just mad at how the show continually treats him like when it comes to like the non-verbal characters too it's like why y'all doing this like they don't even have like moments where they can talk to themselves in their mind like i feel like even if you aren't verbal in the outside world you should be able to talk in your own mind we have a lot of situations with these people where they are having their own like fantasy scenes or like hallucinations and they don't even get to talk there and i just feel like it's so weird and icky that there are actors and actresses of color that they don't even get to speak and i don't know that's personally my ick i don't know what y'all will think about that but now i specifically want to talk about my issues surrounding the boys fandom so like i said the show refuses to let homelander have any type of repercussions for his actions that man is too powerful and season after season after season he gets no type of actual punishment it gets annoying but due to the fact that the show refuses to let this dude have any type of weakness or any type of punishment scenes right we get a bunch of weirdos on the internet who are white supremacists who use homelander as a power fantasy and at first i didn't really see what was going on because i wasn't on twitter but as i got onto twitter i really realized that a lot of these people are weird and sick and so let's just talk about it the boys is supposed to be a satire right it's supposed to be a satire of the current state of america but the fact that we're so polarized that the fact that we do a lot of celebrity worship but if y'all haven't picked up on it now homelander specifically is supposed to be an allegory for trump it was super obvious with the way that dude does so many problematic things and the people specifically the, the bots organization knows that he's problematic but they use all of their power and their connections to literally hide his crimes just like how the republican party and the people who work for trump literally do that like how many times do all of these random women have to come out and say that trump did some type of weird bio disgusting thing to them like it's literally given a one-on-one -on -one parallel except for homeland of the lettuce trump he looked like that and i just feel like a lot of the people who idolize i'm not saying like I'm talking about idolize like literally look at homelander like he is a god figure and should be you know appreciated propped up and i really feel like the people who idolize i'm not talking about people who like okay i'm not talking about people who like homelander as a villain i'm talking about the people who specifically idolize him are actually sick in the head and the greatest example that i can talk about in terms of people who literally idolize homelander has to be kiki palmer's disgusting baby daddy so if you guys don't know in the canon of the show the reason why this guy i want to say his name is butch the names are escaping me but editor emma will get y'all in terms of pictures the reason why this guy specifically hates all superheroes is because homelander kidnapped his wife and at the beginning of the series which thought that homelander had just killed his wife but no no what homelander did specifically was that he sa'd his wife and then the vox company disappeared his wife into like this abandoned wood somewhere because she was pregnant with her rape baby homelander's rape baby and so we're all looking at this dude well all of the people were sent okay all of us were sent are looking at homelander like oh my god this guy is a villain villain he has no redeemable traits right because there's a bunch of villains in this show that have some type of redeemable traits but no homelander is awful right but like i said there is a section of our population that is weird and decides that this guy oh my god i wish i could be him and that's because the boys prop homelander up to such a pedestal that seeing him violates women be on others treat minorities like they don't matter it literally is a power fantasy for him like he literally is the ideal white supremacist misogynistic icon for certain people but going back onto the top 
topic of Kiki Palmer's disgusting piece of trash baby daddy, right? Trigger warning domestic abuse. Kiki Palmer and her trash can baby daddy have kind of been having a little bit, at least of the time of me collecting this information, have been having a little bit of a custody dispute because Kiki Palmer kept accusing her boyfriend or baby daddy at the time of domestic abuse and no one believed her. And so while they were arguing over, he said, she said, because he said she was abusive, he said she was abusive, right? He decided that it was perfectly okay to post this disgusting cryptic message. And I'm just going to play it for you guys so you guys can see what I'm talking about. My son! And as you can see, this is a clip from the boys TV show of Homelander saying, where's my son? I'm gonna get my son. And then the caption he proceeded to say underneath it was very vile and disgusting. And what made this situation even worse is that A, we all know the situation that surrounded Homelander trying to get his son back from the woman that he S8 and abused. Was Kiki Palmer later that week or later that month dropping this disgusting video of her baby daddy holding her over a couch and choking her? So this is what I'm talking about when I say the idolization of Homelander goes to a point where I'm so afraid. And people are like, we just like Homelander as a villain. But it's gotten past that. There are people like Kiki Palmer's disgusting baby daddy who actually idolize. I don't know what y'all want from me. I wanted to make sure I have proof. But when I say that people actually idolize Homelander, it's a mess. And it isn't people who are known abusers such as Kiki Palmer's boyfriend or baby daddy there are people who are actually holding homelander to a pedestal so this right here is homelander and his dad being named gilf and dilf of the year which is like oh the dad i like to f the only reason he's a dad is because he s8 someone but pop off i guess and then there is a bleacher report ad where one of the athletes is changed into homelander's outfit and this is the stuff that i'm talking about in terms of the cult of personality that specifically surrounds homelander because what do you mean he is literally being idolized to this point and i just feel like it's so messy and it's so gross i don't know i hope kiki palmer is in a better mental headspace but the idolize of Homelander is really gross. Now let's talk about Gen V. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I really prefer Gen V over the boys. It's really good. I personally love the fact that we are getting more adult college stories. The fact that for a while there was a trend of high school stories where the teenagers in these high school stories were doing adult actions was pissing me off but Gen V said hold my coffee and I really 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 love the show but because of the fact that a lot of the fans of the boys are like white supremacist incel types they were so pissed that Amazon decided to make a spin-off that had a black woman as the lead they were even more pissed when they found out that we had a bi-gender individual in the show and I just saw so many bad takes when the show was coming out and you could really tell that a lot of these people just straight up hated women. It was gross. So Marie Monroe's power is the fact that she can bloodbend, right? She's a bloodbender, taking it all the way back to Avatar. Uh, OG bloodbender, if you would like to say that. And people were so mad and people were so grossed out. That's the way that Marie figured out that she had powers is that she had her first period and accidentally bloodbended. And I was just so confused and I was so lost because this is what y'all calling gross when literally in the TV show, right? The boys, Mother's Milk literally got with male liquid for a good like two minutes so i'm like we have to be serious here and the reason why people really hate marie's powers is due to the fact that she's a woman and women bleed it's very much given misogyny right and like i said people were so mad that marie was able to do a little bit of damage to homelander when literally if you watch the show you can tell that all the people who have blood bending powers are op we have that one girl who's like a politician in the boys tv show who literally can blow heads so why are y'all confused that someone with blood bending powers would be able to do damage to Homelander? It's because she's black is because she's a woman and honestly i'm so glad that the boys fandom and the gen v fandom are two different types of fandoms because it was so annoying seeing the people who were fans of the boys strictly try to interact with us who are fans of gen v because you could tell that these people don't realize that there isn't just straight white men in this world like they were so mad that a shapeshifter would be by gender like sometimes i'm like
like think 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 like why would that not make sense to y'all you mean to tell me someone who's able to change their genders at will wouldn't have some type of gender dysphoria and they're like no this is that woke nonsense i'm telling y'all whenever someone says woke nonsense or uses the word woke in 2024 you gotta stop listening to them because they're about to be on some nonsense okay guys i wanted to give you a little bit of context on what's going on i wanted to specifically talk about my experience as a black woman in the boys fandom and i decided to get someone on here who can definitely help in terms of having that discussion and that's one of my favorite creators mighty z and so i really hope that you guys like the interview that i did with her for the sake of the video now let's just hop into it so before i start asking you questions would you like explain who you are like that type of stuff all right uh well yeah i'm the mighty z uh you can just call me z um and i speak on representation and things like uh comic books films tv shows and usually i will focus on black women's representation in media however i will also look more in depth into other marginalizations as well so the first question i have for you is can you elaborate on the concept of the problematic fandom and how it specifically relates to the boys the tv show oh well, you know usually when most people bring up like fandoms they're in like you know the toxic groups you know uh they're talking about like the kind of people that you know, just really misread what a show was selling. Like, you know, uh, a show could be saying like, OK, well, we want to highlight these women more. But then the show, but then like the fans will somehow still attempt to like over sexualize and demean the female characters, like people who just go out of their way to misrepresent what a show was saying. Um, and these are going to be the people who are usually, you know, attacking other people within these groups and these fandoms like you know, if, uh, say, Black fans want to participate in something like cosplays, things like that, you know, they're always the first ones to start dogpiling them. They're always the ones to start uh, sending death threats to certain writers, actors, or other people in the fandoms when things don't go their way. You know, just those people. And, you know, we can always say, oh, well, that's just a small part. But my thing is, even a small part can be a loud part. And that has a significant impact on not only people's enjoyment, but people's well-being overall. I've seen that a lot with the boys. I didn't know that people really took, like people didn't know the boys were satire because me, when I saw Homelander and I watched season one, I was like, oh, he's the bad guy. And he's supposed to be like making fun of all of the extreme Republicans and like the MAGA people. But pe I remember it was this one tweet on um, Twitter and somebody was like, oh, this show isn't supposed to be political. And I was like, the boys? That show? It's extreme. And see, that's kind of the dangerous part about the boys is that, you know, we have to think about the social climate that we're in right now. We are currently experiencing a worldwide rise in the far right. And these are people, they will take any representation they can get. It doesn't matter if the person is like pegged as the villain. All they see is a man with power and screen time because we have to think homelander while he is the villain or the antagonist he gets some of the most screen time out of any other character he his face is on the posters for the show there's merchandise for him he is a commercialized character we're seeing him in video games now he's in mortal kombat uh he's in a uh, call of duty all these different things so you have to really think you know even though he's a villain he's still someone with power and he's getting a lot of attention and we have to also think about the fact that you know he's a complex character the writers give him depth even if it's like something we don't agree with he still has depth and to people who align with his viewpoints they see themselves in him they see that power in him and you can like say like oh well uh we're showing him do something stupid they'll just say that as comedy and that'll actually make him more likable to them so we have to think you know, are these kinds of characters, you know, too dangerous? Or should we even be showing characters like this? We've seen how people will take things to the extreme. And now you've got this character. He's a main character. He's got, um, like, you know, he's a very powerful uh, within this specific universe. Yeah. And, you know, he's not getting the consequences that he should either. Cause we have to think, you know, he's still standing. Uh, you know, you could get into like how the boys ends and all that other stuff, but he's still standing. Hasn't really gotten any repercussions for anything yet. So 
you know, where do we go from here? Like, you have, like, this character who's being treated like a character, so people are gonna like him. That's the dangerous part of it. You know, sometimes I've even seen people who don't like him still like him as a character. Yeah, that's really disturbing to me because personally, I have you watched Gen V by any chance before? Yeah, like, yeah. Did you finish it? Yeah. So even though like it's obviously building up to the fact that there's going to be like, like, you know, it's probably going to be um, Starlight, uh, Queen Maeve, if she ever comes out of hiding. Um, and Marie, Marie Monroe is probably going to be like the final team's in Homelander. That's what I, I feel like is at least being hinted at. I've seen so many people like, it's just a lot of misogynoir whenever there's a black women yeah. or character in anything but I'm like there's no way you guys saw Homelander strike her down with his laser eyes and you still don't think she's like strong because for anybody else they would have died on the spot but the fact that we still see oh her- actually I'm glad you brought that up because I actually just saw a TikTok this morning of people like sh- like being like oh Homelander ended her like no no like did, you, did you not see this but I'm, that's what I'm saying they put him in this position where he does win to them, he appears to be the winner. And because of that, you know, people are going to side with him. And even though, you know, Marie survived, they still see it as, you know, her losing. And they just like the fact that they got to see a black woman get brutalized by a white man. Yeah. Um, I didn't write this in the question, but I saw that you were talking about how um, even though The Boys is like a very violent and graphic show, its depiction, in especially like marginalization yes. and um, brutalization, is something that whenever you try to bring it up, people shame you for it. Can you talk more about that, please? Yeah, that's the thing. You know, people, they like the violence. They like all that other stuff. They, they're like, well, how are you going to know the character is bad if they don't do uh, something bad? Like, bro, I didn't need to see a black man and his children get violently murdered by a Nazi to know that Nazis are bad. Yeah. Like, that's another issue that I have. It's like, you know, this show is telling me things that I already know. You know, uh, you know, corporatism, America, warfare, all this stuff. Like, I know about this. We as marginalized people already know about this. So why do we need to see ourselves getting brutalized, murdered for the entertainment of other people just to be told like, oh, well, this is bad. Like we already knew that. To me, it's ex- it's exploitation. Yeah, I, I feel like the same way too. A lot of the times when I watch shows like this, I can definitely tell that the main audience isn't people of color because we've been you. Um, we had to read um, The Handmaid's Tale in school once mm-hmm. and i had a lot of like my white you know female students you know peers or whatever like this is so shocking i can't believe the government would ever do stuff like like this you know to women and in my head i was like they've been did this like yeah if you even try to open up a history book you'll know that like sterilization has been a, a major problem what's gonna call it that uh, marginalized women face so mm-hmm. seeing the stuff that is on the what's gonna call it uh the boys i'm like yeah we've been you if you even do a, a, a quick Google search, like even the CIA, like they'll tell us to our face that they did that. So it's not like mm-hmm. it's like, you know, groundbreaking. We've been you. And, you know, think about it, too. Like, you know, um, unlike Gen V, the boys has a predominantly white writing direction, all that stuff. Like white people are the ones producing this. So they're not coming with this with the amount of experience, empathy, understanding. No. They're just doing graphic stuff for the purpose of getting views. It doesn't send a message to me. It's just exploiting me. Yeah. I I do feel like a lot of the times when I'm watching um, the boys specifically, that's why I liked Gen V better. Sometimes it's just doing stuff to just shock value. Like I remember Mm -hmm. in the arc um, where it was like they had Soldier Boy or whatever, and they had to go like to the sex party with the soups and like, mother milk got attacked by a gigantic penis i had to look from side to side and i was like there's no way there's no way this is what i'm seeing on my screen this was so unnecessary and it's yeah and that's see see, and like the that part of it too it's like okay this is supposed to be a show that's like telling me about like you know the horrors of you know power and oppression and da 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 do but you're also framing this show as a comedy yeah so how are you going to talk about something that deeply emotional and impactful but then also have a bunch of like dick jokes like i i I see my thing is you're either gonna do a valid commentary 
or you're just not going to do it at all. Because, you know, we've already seen, um, you know, this type of work done well. You know, we've seen Get Out. You know, there are ways of talking about these issues in a non-exploitative manner. But here it's like, no, there's actually something kind of devious about the show. Because like I said, the staffing is majority white. They're placing all the white characters front and center. So then it's like, you know, we can say that it's satirizing these things and they don't agree with these things. But at the same time, it's like it's like they're fence sitting almost like, you know, they want, you know, those uh, views from like, you know, the usual uh, liberals, white liberals, that kind of stuff. But then they also don't want to alienate their conservative audience either. So they allow the characters who are doing these horrible things to kind of just, you know, schmooze over it. It's fine. It, like they just get by with so much because even Soldier Boy, after everything he's done, he's still being pushed to the forefront by the marketing itself. Like these are like just like the fact like you can see it. Which characters are being put into like the favorite zone by the staff itself? Yeah. Ah. I have to agree. Um, what I feel like is the main problem, I'm kind of really scared for the next season of The Boys because I feel like with the way they specifically treat their um, characters of color and like supposedly we're going to get a, a black woman in the seven. And yeah, that's what I've been. Yeah, I think her name is Sister Sage, which already in itself makes me want to. Mm. I'm already I'm already scared because I'm like, if this is how <laughs> if this is how like you've been consistently treating your um you know characters of color and then there's gonna be a black woman in the seven like I, I i'm not i'm not looking forward to all of the awful jokes that homelander is gonna give us like it's gonna be awful yeah like no because that, that's another thing too like i said there's no understanding or empathy in the writing like you know black women have been saying for years like you know this is how we're being treated we don't want to see this anymore but here, it's like, that's exactly what they're going to show us. I don't I don't see anything, like, empowering about it. I don't see anything, like, you know, very, like, you know, oh, we're going to have this way, maybe racist to her, and maybe she'll do something cool. Like, no, I, I don't want to see that anymore. I'm tired of that. So, what are your, I know how, like, you overall feel about The Boys, the TV show, and I know you said you watched Gen V. What do you, like, what are your feelings towards Gen V as a, I guess, spinoff then? I feel like Gen V is... It, it works a little better because, you know, we actually see marginalized characters being put into like the center and we're actually getting more in-depth writing for them. And I believe that there was a bit more of a diverse staff when it came to the writing of the show. I think Stephanie Williams was one of the people involved. I have to look into that again. Um, but I do like the framing of it. And I think it kind of works against everything the boys itself was doing before. And I also believe that's why it got a little bit more pushback from, you know, the usual The Boys fandom. Um, you can actually see that there's actually a huge difference in the Gen V fandom versus The Boys fandom. Like, these are two separate things because they're these are two shows that are talking to two different people. And that should actually show people what we're talking about. Because, you know, The Boys, I see this and I think it's for white men. Yes. Okay. The, well, the Gen V. I don't feel that way. I feel like it's just because of how it's framed with our main characters. Like Huey has been our main character since like season one. And so throughout the whole entire trauma of like the season, we get to see from his white male straight point of view. And the fact that yeah. we got um, Marie Monroe as our main character for Gen V was just such a like switch because instead of it making it seem like people of color were like the butt of the joke, we get to see how yeah. like being on the other side affects, you know, our, um, what's we call it, our main characters. Mm -hmm. like the fact that we have Jordan Lee, who's like our bi-gender, what's we call it, love interest, right, for season one. We get to see that even though they have, like, you know, their, their stats are pretty high, but due to the fact that it's not marketable to be one Asian and um, be bi-gender, they still are number five on the list of, like, the top yeah. ranked superheroes. And the fact that people consistently dog down on Marie like at the end of um I forgot uh -huh. how many episodes we had this season but at the end where Homelander was like what kind of animal are you that yeah like that was definitely 
like and I feel like if it was in the boys it would have been more of like a dog pile on Marie because it's kind of like that's the humor like unnecessary amounts of dog piling yeah and like that's why like like that this is exactly kind of what I was getting into before where I'm like they put him in a position where he like he he almost gets away with too much like he doesn't get put in his place nearly as much as he should I don't feel like at all like no that, not at all like i feel like that's also the problem he needs to be taken down a peg and i guess that's what they're building up towards too but with the way that he's never held accountable or when he is it immediately back like backslides it is getting mm -hmm. and a lot of people are like especially like the extreme races and the people who are sexist or whatever right they don't see the consequences of their actions because they're they're starting to idolize him and practically see him as like someone to look up towards to and it's sick yeah. and that's the thing like we're actually seeing this even beyond the boys which is why i keep saying like you know i think writers need to be a lot more careful with the kind of characters they're creating now like you know we're seeing people like you know marvel fans who like are super into hydra Hydra is and always was, since its very creation, a Nazi organization. Yes. But like they and them, they only see like, you know, oh, well, cool superpowers, cool complex villain. Like, no, no, they're Nazis. Um, like, I really don't think these are the kind of characters that need to be framed anymore uh, because it's clear that the writing has changed because, you know, beforehand, characters like this were being written by Jewish people. So they came with the understanding of what these people were and what they represented and how to handle them. Because, you know, back before Hydra, they were villains and that's how they stayed. You know, they were villains and they were treated like villains and they were properly disposed of. But now you have white, white writers who are taking over and they're making it so that these Nazis are given like full on backstories, complex writing, uh, even kind of making them like, what is it, morally gray? Like, no, they're, they're Nazis. They, they need to be treated like that. Like, like it's very perplexing seeing it all go down. Like even with uh, characters like, what is it, Omni-Man from uh, Invincible. Yeah, I haven't even watched that one yet. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, like Omni-Man is like straight up genocidal. Yeah. Genocidal, like horrible, abusive, person but because he is a white man with power people will gravitate towards him and he was never like i said he doesn't get uh well not in this season not yet he hasn't gotten repercussions for his actions yet but you already have these white men and like these overall problematic people who are gravitating towards him and thinking that he deserves a second chance like the fact that they are actually having empathy for these characters and they see good in these characters is a red flag like you actually have people who are calling homelander an anti-hero i've seen it that is not what a, that is not what an anti-hero like no he's a villain because that's the thing they, they they see themselves in these characters they want good that's the thing they want these characters to have like morality because they don't want anything bad to happen to these characters because these are the characters they see themselves in and that is very dangerous when we start getting to that point where, you know, these genocidal Nazi racist white supremacist characters are characters that people can sympathize with. Yeah. Um, Cause even, um, have you seen Peacemaker? No, isn't that the one with a uh, John Cena? Yes. Uh, you know, we have a uh, Peacemaker, you know, he's like that typical, oh, well he grew up in a racist environment, but he's trying to be better. Like, you know, that type. And then I'm just like, okay. And then, you know, his father is the White Dragon. White Dragon is essentially a KKK member. Oh, wow. Um, you know, he's the villain and stuff, but then you still have people who are like, oh, well, actually, I think that was kind of cool. Like, no. Because that's the thing. Like, you know, people like cool powers. So if a character has cool powers, people will tend to gravitate towards them. And that's dangerous when your character is a literal white supremacist. And like that, that's what I'm saying. Writers, I understand, you know, like writers can't fully be blamed for the audience. And, you know, it's up to the audience to have the media literacy to understand these things. But I'm like, given our current social climate, we have to really think about the people that we are putting on these like in these positions. Because, you know, we make these like racist, these super powerful characters 
with like in-depth writing and morality, we're getting to a very dangerous point in what you're actually portraying to the audience. It's actually almost manipulative to the audience. So that leads me into my next question. So are there any steps do you think that management, the writers could do to make this less of a problem? Specifically in the book? Well, first, well, first of all, they need to listen to actual marginalized people because I believe it took them until like the later seasons to actually listen to the um, Asian community regarding um, Kimiko because you know that character fell under what's called the silent Asian trope and people have been like telling about them telling that about them for like years not years but you know a while but yeah a while a while they had been arguing and talking to them and it took them just now to start listening only now like they're not listening to us that's the problem because we've been telling them like even like mother's milk's name is rooted in the racism from the character from the comics they never changed that the fact that that's still his name is disrespectful like they didn't listen to a single black person i don't even think they had anybody in the room telling them what to do with these characters because you know it's, it's still giving written by a white person yeah like none of these characters feel organic like it, it's hmm. and then you know like what I was saying before just listening because also I've reached out to people um who are you know uh Middle Eastern Southwest Asian North African and you know there was a character in the early show earlier seasons who was you know depicted as a you know suicide bomber yes I remember that yeah I think that you just called him super terrorist or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like that. And yeah, my thing is, who was that for? Because that was not for Middle Eastern people. That was not for, you know, Arabs. That was not for Muslims. Because I mean, like, we already have a huge issue of the dehumanization of um, people in the Middle East and North Africa especially in our media. Especially yeah, especially now. We have so much Islamophobia here. And that's what you thought would be funny. Because that's the thing. That character was a joke. That character was treated like a joke. It was comedy. So how can you say, oh, we're um, actually satirizing Homelander in America when you're actually making fun of the people America is harming? Yeah. After a while, it's like, is this really satire? Because who? Yeah. who's your target audience? Who's supposed to laugh? The white supremacist. Yeah, because I also believe Eric Kripke is involved in the direction of the boys. I think he is. And Eric Kripke is Eric Kripke is the same one who um, I think he was over Supernatural a while ago. Um, and that show itself has a lot of issues with racism yeah, and sexism. Yeah, because I'm like, you still have these white men who hold problematic beliefs who are now attempting to speak for us marginalized people. And they're not actually talking to us about what we would be comfortable with they're just going based off of what they think would be funny yeah and that's a shame okay so do you have any like final thoughts honestly i'm just waiting for this to, I'm, I'm just waiting for it to end like because my thing is that's the only way we can get rid of these people because the fandom has gotten bad the social climate has gotten bad yeah it's getting worse actually and now you're talking about the minute i heard homelander was getting put in mortal Kombat as a dlc character i know that was going on yeah they put it the omni man is in the game and homelander is going to be in the game peacemaker is going to be in the game too so i'm like okay so these are the kind of people who you're now trying to get the audience that's the thing they see that these crazy white dudes they see that they spend their money on these things so now they're marketing to them because why else would they put these characters in this game? Because Homelander, in any other universe, is not a strong character. The average Mortal Kombat character would body him easily. They're putting him in here because they want to gain that audience. Because they see that there's money in that. It's a money game. Because, like, really, and, like, that's the thing. They chose him over the multitudes of uh, female characters, uh, women of color, that they actually had on their original roster. Oh, that's embarrassing. So I'm like, yeah, no, no, especially Jade, because Jade means a lot as like one of like the first uh, black or Blasian women in um, a game that I saw as a kid. 
So having Homelander, of all people, get chosen for a DLC in a game before she was even introduced feels like a, just, you know, slap. It's, it's a slap in the face. You know, and of course, you know, we do have a pretty diverse cast in Mortal Kombat already. Um, but the male to female ratio is very skewed. And then they think that it's a good idea to like, instead of like bringing back most of the girls we were asking for, they're like, oh, let's bring like the three men that, you know, these problematic uh, comic guys love so much. <laughs> and that's another thing, too, is um, my final issue with the boys. Um, you know, I've been in comics for a while. And the comic fandom has actually gotten a lot better, but there's still those people who are there. And it's the fact that they think that this is a good way of satirizing comics. But it's not because, I mean, you know, the Homelander is obviously a, a Superman ripoff. And I feel like that's a slap in the face to not only Superman, but the people who created Superman. Superman was created by Jewish men. Yeah. His design is based on a Jewish man. His origin story is rooted in Judaism. And the, you know, life of a Jewish immigrant. And you think that it's funny to make him a white supremacist. There won't be, there's never anything good about making a uh, Superman who is a fascist. Um, even people who have attempted to attempted it before have apologized for it because it goes against everything his character stands for so when you're out here trying to say like oh homelander is uh, better than superman because like no no homelander is a horrible horrible version of superman that goes against everything that he is and everything that the people created him to be so when you're like having these characters like you know we like we know like the original justice league um these characters are horrible in order for something to be a satire, it has to be critiquing something. So what's there to be critiqued about a character like Superman? What is there to be critiqued about him? He's a symbol of hope. He represents immigrants. He represents Jewish people. He represents marginalization. He represents standing up for the little guy. So what is there to be critiqued about him? Like, it's like, it's just shows how much of these characters are created from a white male perspective and that's why they just don't work well thank you so much for like interviewing with me i've always loved your takes especially the ones well, thank you movies. you brought a lot of like i don't know you opened up my eyes to a lot of things i didn't even notice before so it just means a lot that i could get you on my channel to you know speak your piece speak on you know the whole disgusting situation that's going on in the boys fandom and I just want to say thank you. Also, congrats on your new job. Oh, no. it on TikTok. oh thank you so much. <laughs> and it isn't just the overall racism and bigotry that really pisses me off in terms of interacting with the boys fandom. It's the overall lack of media literacy that the boys fandom has. It's actually a mess. So like I said, anyone with eyes can realize that Homelander is an obvious allegory to Trump and how he has a gigantic cult of personality surrounding him. The rest of us with eyes and ears to see, we're able to be like, yeah, we clocked that tea like in season one and for some people season two, right? But specifically in season three, he literally had like a fake MAGA rally, right? He literally had like a Make America Great Again rally and people still didn't clock his tea. It's only now in season four that they're literally hard, hardcore, making fun of Trump people and the MAGA supporters that now they're like, this show is woke garbage, this show is trash, now this show is getting woke. And I'm just like, um, hello? Where have y'all been? The lack of media literacy is killing us and I feel like it's because of the fact that people are shaming humanities classes. The humanities classes were supposed to teach us how to critically analyze media but because of people seeing it as worthless and idiotic, this is how we got here as a people. Because literally, hardcore literally, not figuratively, there was a whole in the TV show, right? And even Homelander had to look at her like, no baby, no, like, we not doing this, no. And y'all didn't clock that T. They literally had a woman empowerment movement where like, I think it was Starlight, Kamiko, and, and the character, I think her name is like Maeve. They literally beat up the Nazi. So I just don't know what y'all thought this was. The boys TV show isn't what y'all think it is. And that's why I have to go back to the whole power scaling thing of Homelander. The fact that y'all let Homelander be built up to this point with no repercussions has fostered these people to think that 
that he is for them. And the whole gag is that the show is making fun of these people who support people like Trump, people like Homelander. I don't know how people didn't get that. Like the messaging has been there from the beginning. And I really wanted to show you guys the mind states of the boys fandom for yourself so you can really see what I'm talking about. And so the next section of this video is practically going to be me walking y'all through what it's like trying to be a boys fan while interacting with these people who don't have any basic media literacy and how wild it is. To be honest, I have no idea how long this section is going to be because being on the boys Twitter is literally a living hellscape. But I picked out some of my favorite wildest things that I have read while being on the boys Twitter and I just wanted to share them with y'all. So this user said, that scene where Homelander chokes out Starlight in the elevator and digs his fingers into her rib cage, sent tweet. And then somebody was like, uh hum, I'm not caught up. And then they said, catch up is so good. I've never seen that, but I imagine it and I'm wet. Look at these words, y'all, look at these words. <laughs> And then the original poster said, it's so sexy, it's my favorite. Let's move on. The next tweet says, folks make fun of Homelander fans for how much they dick ride him, then turn around and try to justify Azula as a misunderstood girl boss. And then someone with sense was like, yeah, they're the same, except for one is a Superman knockoff that wears an American cape and lasers people and lives out his sick, twisted fantasies on screen, and the other is Azula. And this is what I'm talking about with the whole idolization of Homelander because there's no way you looked at Azula and Homelander and we're like yeah it's the same thing baby it's not the same but let's continue like the interview I had with Mighty Z where we were talking about how people really see themselves in Homelander and see Homelander as a figure to look up to this right here really got me <laughs> this person says these are the four greatest anti-heroes in all of fiction and I want you to really just look at this tweet they have Miguel O'Hara, Deadpool, Homelander, and that dude, the actual villain of uh, Total Drama Island. And this is what I'm talking about when I say that people just don't have media literacy. Because anti-hero, the only person who I can even see where they're coming from is definitely Deadpool. All of these other people are for sure the villains of their own story. So, huh? But guys, it only gets worse from here. This is a message that was originally posted on Reddit, but someone uploaded on Twitter just to show the reality of Homelander fans. And it says here, Homelander from the boys is hella relatable. Hear me out. To me, he is one of the most relatable characters I have seen in a show. Red flag. Homelander is the little embodiment of everyone's deep inner ego. Wants to be powerful and strong. Wants to be feared without repercussion, but also wants love. <laughs> specifically maternal love wants to be famous and make great speeches and influence people to leave their mark wherever they go that guy wants attention and love from people but he doesn't get any because he behaves like an idiot after being screwed up by people in his childhood so he tries to fight himself to let go of that to not give a shit but he can't help it some part of him still wants to be loved and isn't afraid of being left behind of course he acts like an asshole many times but honestly what would you expect from any human that's given godlike powers and then it ends with my opinion and i just want y'all to know that literally even in the boys franchise there are people who have literally been given godlike powers that they don't rape people that don't beat people that don't do what homelander does like these people are telling on themselves they really are and going back to the whole idolization of homelander thing this person says homelander and omni man are the heroes i've been needing to see on tv and this person said homelander is a lot of things hero hmm. and this is what i'm talking about guys because even though homelander has literally done so many despicable things and he literally is the villain of the boys tv show People literally worship the ground he walks on. But now let me talk about the racism that comes from these Homelander stands. Because it's bad. It's really, really bad. And when I say that the boys fandom and specifically Homelander stands just be daft and they don't have good media literacy, this is what I'm talking about. So this person says, the boys TV show used to be one of my favorites, pointing out the elite evil tendencies in the form of superheroes. Now it pivots to say, Trump people bad other people good along with every scene injecting woke nonsense plus new strong smart 
female black characters what the hell and this is what I'm talking about, bro. The boys has always been a satire on both the right and the left. And the fact that you could understand all of the jabs at the people on the left, but not understand the jabs at the people on the right is what is killing me. You really thought that Homelander, the dude who literally kills people, abuses his power, is always used in military campaigns to go kill people for, like, to go kill people in the Middle East was the good guys. And now I want to talk about this nonsense i saw on tiktok specifically in terms of marie monroe because all of this problematic ideology is found in all homelander fans so this person took a screenshot of an edit of marie monroe and someone was like yeah marie is definitely going to beat him up in like season four or five and guys follow me here this person says not to mention homelander better looking for real if that person doesn't prove it's idk what does for real, he ain't no melon muncher. You see how the person like that ish? Someone said, bro. He's saying bro like he ain't like it. Then the person said, you heard me. He ain't no melon munching, grape Kool-Aid sipping, cotton pick. I don't want to read the rest. I don't, I don't want to read the rest. But this is what I'm talking about. This is what us black fans, us fans of colors have to deal with. It's always this nonsense. And I'm not going to lie. The show and the show producers feed into this nonsense. And to finally end my points about how there's no saving the boys fans. And how I feel like they'd be watching the show with their eyes closed. This person said, there is nothing political about this show. And this person said, bro are you serious and i wanted to read this quotes article to show you guys that these people don't know what the hell they're talking about because this show is one of the most political shows i've watched in a long time but let's clock in so i'm going to be reading this article called we're living in the dumbest dystopia the boy's boss on his superhero hit it says the second season of the boys was as much a social commentary on our current insane era as it was a thrilling superhero saga how much do you think about current events when you write the show we think a lot about current events but obviously we can't predict the future this is the same shit now that was happening when we wrote it in 2018 people forget that two years ago we were still dealing with cops pulling over african-american men an incredible amount of xenophobia and there's good people on both sides of white nationalism gag it gag it maybe the proud boys weren't a household world but charlottesville was but we don't live in that time anymore so the myth of the superhero taking straight that's where it starts to become fascist. But they're projecting a world that doesn't and shouldn't exist. Superheroes are inherently MAGA. In terms of Stormfront, there was nothing specifically personal behind it. It was just, I hate Nazis. I hate alt-right white nationalism. I hate racism in all forms. Gag it. Gag it. I was really interested in exploring what modern white supremacy looks like. Gag it. Gag it. Because in the boys comics, the character Stormfront is just a straight out Nazi. But the white supremacy I see in the modern day is cloaked in social media. There's often very attractive young people who are using social media better than we are and presenting themselves as free thinkers and outside the box when really they're just peddling the same shit people have peddled for thousands of years. A few things. The myth of superheroes themselves, though often created by young Jewish writers in the 30s and 40s, doesn't really apply as cleanly today because there's undeniable fascist underpinnings to it. They're here to protect white patriotic America. That's what they were designed to do, and that's what they do. They're protecting the status quo. When the status quo is problematic, suddenly they become adversational, not your hero. And I think it was written by a lot of people who at that time were trying their best to fit into and vanish within white American society. And I'm just so glad that I found this on Twitter to then find the original article because, bro, the creator was eating so if you are not upset at the show being woke the show has been woke literally since what 2018 so for all of those people who didn't really see the subtext i don't know what to tell you now let me get into the whole pewdiepie fandom debate that happened because it really goes to show you that this fandom is beyond saving at this point okay context context also spoilers for like everything okay let's hop into it so practically the scene that i'm about to show you involves our main character marie monroe who has literally been an orphan in an orphanage 
bitch for literally the majority of her life finally being exposed to the internet and so that is the context shoddy don't know nothing about nothing like she practically grew up in a cave now let's watch the scene that caused all of the boys fans and all of the beauty pie fans to lose their minds david caruso you didn't see jade are you fucking kidding oh well so what were you doing um a youtube show fun size with little cricket you haven't seen it oh well i'm kind of like pewdiepie without the nazi stuff Wait, you don't know me either? We only had one computer growing up, and it was donut glazed from all the 14-year-old boys, so... So, the whole purpose of that scene was to show that our character, Marie Monroe, has no idea about social media at all. Like, Shadi don't even got a phone, and it's like 2023 at the time the show was made, right? And so, people were so mad at this scene and they were coming up with all of these bad takes it was just horrendous to see i have some screenshots that i do want to share with you guys but i really just have to speak my piece without reading people's thoughts first people were like how is a girl who's so obsessed with social media going to mention pewdiepie like pewdiepie and his whole nazism thing wasn't seven years ago if I'm talking to someone who says they don't know nothing about nothing, I'm not really going to talk about the current trending stuff because if Marie Monroe doesn't have a phone, me mentioning some up and coming YouTube slash streaming personalities, I know for a fact she wouldn't know. Like if she was like, you don't know Kai Sinat or she was like, you don't know Mr. Beast, I know for a fact she wouldn't know. She already don't got a phone. But someone as big as uh, PewDiePie who literally dominated both the news and the what's gonna call it the internet space that would be a great example for her because i'm like yes he was popular seven years ago and you still don't know him like for example like growing up i was raised in an ultra conservative christian household so i didn't really know anything about african-american music and when i would tell people this they wouldn't believe me so they'd be like you don't know michael jackson and i was like no but if they brought up somebody up and coming someone new and fresh I 100% wouldn't know them if I didn't know Michael Jackson. So I took some screenshots from this thread that I just felt like exemplify my points the most. And your girl is already tired because, oh Jesus. So this is a VTuber, right? And they said, it's the trashiest shit I've ever seen on TV or streaming. Which is like, boo, this is coming from a franchise where people literally have male juice sprayed on their face. But I digress. And the title of their video says, Gen V is PP. <laughs> And the boys attack PewDiePie again. At least this person was smart enough to mention that the actual boys TV show also criticized PewDiePie. And for some reason, people were okay when the boys did it. But when Gen V did it, it was, oh my God, this is wokeism. You know how they get, you know how they get. And the person below this was like, are we supposed to like this character or hate this character? If hate, then this is okay. Like what? Like, oh, bro, I don't even have it in me. Here are some other screenshots that I included for you guys to read. I just don't have it in me. I talked about the main points in the beginning of this segment. But now let's hop into how the boys TV show criticized PewDiePie. And how everybody was silent until the predominantly like black show did it, I guess. Let's, let's just watch the clip. And both of those scenes are literally serving the same point of talking to characters who kind of don't know what's going on because they have been literally sheltered away somewhere. But because of the fact that it's two women and a black woman at that talking about PewDiePie, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, you guys will never let it go. You guys will never let it go. If we are being so serious, PewDiePie and his whole clique of problematic white people were the reason why we had the adpocalypse and so many people weren't able to get monetized on YouTube for so many years. But hey man, people who want to deride off the boys, Homelander and PewDiePie, they all have the same mind. Now let's head back into the video. And yeah, it's a mess. And due to the fact that they have introduced a black woman as a main part of the seven, you know, the fake Justice League, I can already see the bad takes that are going to come onto Twitter. And right now, I already started a prayer meeting for the actress because with the way the boys fandom is and the fact that she's a black woman, y'all already know she's 
she is going to be treated like a trash can in the show and outside the show and yeah my final thoughts are that i really do love the boys tv show it makes me laugh it keeps me entertained but the fact that they have fostered such a toxic fandom it's amazing yeah I i'm actually so shocked like i talk about a lot of problematic fandoms on this channel but dear god is it a mess over there if you guys like this video please hit the thumbs up button it really helps push the video on the algorithm if you guys like this video please leave like a blue heart to let me know you got to this point of the video and let me know have you watched the boys have you watched Gen V? Have you even caught up to the newest season that has dropped? I'm trying to see what's going on in the comment section. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.